Senator from Alabama. Mr. President, uh, uh, before I begin my remarks on the immigration reform, I would like to acknowledge the diligence and leadership of my colleague uh, from Alabama, Senator Sessions, who spent a lot of hours right here on this floor and in the committee before this on this issue of immigration. I commend uh, his relentless efforts to bring to light many of the problems and questions surrounding the legislation before us, some he is, has been talking about in the past few minutes. Mr. President, as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives in 1986, I opposed the Simpson-Mazzoli Act, which granted amnesty to nearly three million illegal immigrants. Supporters of that law then promised that it constituted a one-time fix to our nation's broken immigration system. Instead, the promise itself was broken. At least four times as many illegal immigrants now reside in the U.S. some 27 years later. And despite this failure, the Senate now, tonight, is considering legislation that repeats the mistakes of Simpson-Mazzoli. The provisions are different, but I believe the results will be the same. Still, Mr. President, supporters of this legislation before us promise border security in return for amnesty, just as proponents of Simpson-Mazzoli did. In light of these facts, Mr. President, here's a more credible promise. I believe the child of Simpson-Mazzoli will become the mother of all amnesties. You can call it what you want to. Compounding the mistakes made a generation ago will ensure, I believe, that the problem of illegal immigration revisits generations to come on a much grander scale. Therefore, I rise today to urge my colleagues to reject this deeply flawed legislation. The subject of border security has been talked about here in the Senate. Mr. President, during consideration of the Simpson-Mazzoli Act in 1986 here in the Senate, my former Senate colleague and co-author of that legislation stated the following, and I quote, the American people, he said, in my mind, will never accept a legalization program unless they can be assured this is a one-shot deal, end quote. The assurances to which he referred were border security and tough enforcement of immigration laws. Specifically, Simpson-Mazzoli called for 50% more border patrol personnel for two years and new penalties for employers who hired illegal immigrants. Unfortunately, as we know, the former proved insufficient and the latter was hollow. But it was too late. Nearly three million Ill illegal immigrants uh, had already been granted amnesty by the time most lawmakers figured out that the assurances were basically a sham. Despite the drastic increase in illegal immigration in the intervening years, supporters of the bill now before us, the Senate, make similar assurances of border security in return for a form of amnesty. They say that there will be a surge in border patrol and a fence along the southern border. We've heard it before. But the claim, they claim two main distinctions between their promise and the one we heard in 1986. First, the supporters of this bill say that this bill does not contain amnesty, but a tough path to citizenship. Second, they say that this bill will secure the borders before legalization occurs. But will it? Mr. President, I believe neither claim holds water. Under this legislation, once the Secretary of Homeland Security notifies Congress that the department has begun, Mr. President, begun to implement a so-called comprehensive southern border security strategy and a southern border fencing strategy, she can commence processing applications for registered provisional immigrant status. In addition, the secretary must begin implementing, implementing these plans within 180 days of enactment of this legislation. I'll clarify the, the legal talk. No later than six months after this bill becomes law, those who came here illegally will be allowed to stay legally. I'll clarify that further. 
That's amnesty in whatever you want to call it. The sequence is also noteworthy. No fence must be built before amnesty is granted. No surge in border patrol must occur either. Those things come after, not before. So I return to the fundamental question, Mr. President. Will these measures as structured stop illegal immigration? The Congressional Budget Office, CBO, says no. Instead, CBO provides only a vague and uninspiring assessment that the legislation will slow illegal immigration by some amount greater than 25%, slow immigration. If, if and only if the dubious promises of this legislation are fulfilled. Perhaps that's the more salient point. We don't know what the impact of this will be. We don't know what we're doing. We only know that even the best outcome won't be nearly enough. Mr. President, I believe we should know what we're doing. We should know that the border is secure before any discussion of legalization begins right here in the Senate. But there are economic consequences to all of this too that people need to think about. What we do know, Mr. President, as the economic consequences of this massive amnesty will make struggling Americans, a lot of them struggle even harder. By some estimates, this legislation will produce a surge of more than 30 million immigrants in just the first decade after enactment. Some people believe more. CBO projects that passing this legislation brings grim news about what this will mean for working Americans as well as those looking for work. For example, the unemployment rate, according to CBO, will accelerate over the next six years. Average wages for Americans will drop over the next 10 years. Meanwhile, average wages will rise for those granted amnesty or legalization. Economic output per capita will decrease over the next 10 years and the own budget deficit will increase by more than $14 billion over the next 10 years. In short, this legislation is projected to increase Americans' difficulty in finding a job and then reduce their paycheck when they get one. In my judgment, that's reason enough to oppose any legislation like this. Mr. President, I understand that supporters of this legislation point to better economic projections in the so-called out years. However, even if those projections prove accurate, which we don't know, we should never put the economic well-being of the Americans here on hold. Finally, Mr. President, I'm deeply concerned that this legislation will further strain our overcommitted entitlement and welfare programs. Our nation, as we all know, is over $17 million in debt. We should be working on a long-term plan to put our nation back on the sound physical footing, not adding to the burden. There's also an issue of competitiveness here. Mr. President, long-term thinking would also aggressively promote American competitiveness. Immigration reform, real immigration reform, presents a golden opportunity to advance that call. This legislation misses the mark. In some instances, as we probably all know, China and India together, by some estimates, China and India together graduate nearly a million engineers each year from their universities. The US by comparison graduates approximately 120,000 engineers. In addition, the Manhattan Institute estimates that 51% of engineering PhDs and 41% of physical sciences PhDs who are foreign born are forced to leave the United States once they get a degree. Mr. President, I believe if we really care about immigration reform, if we want to continue to lead the world, we must attract and retain the best and the brightest minds. Yet this legislation would cause a tectonic population labor market shift in the opposite direction. Specifically, CBO projects that among the tens of millions of immigrants, who will come to America under this legislation, there will be seven low-skilled workers for each high-skilled worker. Seven to one, Mr. President. It's little wonder, then, if the CEO, that CBO projects that Americans' wages will fall. 
Two provisions in the legislation will affect this change. First, the current cap on family-based visas will be removed. This will create an unlimited influx of low-skilled workers. Second, the cap on visas for high-skilled workers will be increased, though not nearly enough to meet the demand. The legislation will also impose onerous new restrictions on employers seeking to hire such workers. The authors of this legislation claim that it contains a merit-based approach, which will ensure that more high-skilled immigrants receive visas. They emphasize that their point system favors higher education, consistent employment, and English proficiency. Yet, Mr. President, a closer examination of the details reveals that points would also be awarded on the basis of non-merit factors, such as family ties and civic involvement. In effect, this dilutes not only the point system, but also claims of a merit-based approach that will promote American competitiveness. Mr. President, I think we have some of the best universities in the world. They attract a lot of the most gifted individuals from around the globe deepening our country's vast pool of talent. This in turn attracts companies here and abroad seeking the brightest minds in math, science, and engineering. Graduates, graduates will go on to uh, uh, attain high paying jobs or even create jobs themselves if they're allowed to stay here. Mr. President, I believe we must do more to allow such talent to stay, especially in light of increasingly global and competitive economy. In closing, Mr. President, I would quote Mark Twain, who once cleverly observed, history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. In the context of immigration reform, the promises we hear today sound a lot like those we heard in 1986. But this time, the amnesty will be much bigger. I believe that consequences will be many. Undermining the rule of law, failing to secure the border, increasing economic difficulties for American workers and job seekers, eroding our nation's finances, and weakening our competitive position internationally. Mr. President, I believe that one of our fundamental responsibilities as lawmakers are to support policies that foster the conditions for job creation and economic prosperity in America. I believe we must remain a welcoming nation, but we must always put Americans first. In my judgment, this legislation fails in many corners, and it fails most tests. Accordingly, I will respectfully but firmly oppose it, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. I yield the floor.